So we drove our corner post to the depth we're looking for. We have our outside lean. And we went ahead and installed a second guide wire at the bottom. This will act as a straight line guide as we install this next vertical brace post as well as our line post as we go. Some of our contractors might choose to do this by building their H braces at their termination points and then stringing high tensile wire at their lowest strand, maybe about eight inches off the ground, and then getting that wire up to tension. That'll give them a good clean look down the fence and the vegetation is not likely to interfere with that wire one way or another. For our application, we're using twine today. We have that readily on hand. So we went ahead and used a bottom and a top guide to make sure we line up these posts as best we can. Our distance for line posts are gonna take their cue off of this vertical brace post. We want our H bracing to be two times the height of the fence. So we have roughly a four foot finish here. We're going to use a full eight foot post to be our horizontal. When you're placing your vertical post, you wanna keep that post tighter rather than farther away because we can always trim this horizontal post to keep it tight, but we can't stretch it if we have too much of a gap on the other end. So make sure you line up your horizontal post in a way that it'll be nice and snug for this H-brace. Once we have our H-brace distancing, we can go ahead and drive this post and get ready to continue on with line posts. So we drove our vertical post up the hill at the corner brace. We're down here at the lower brace end. This is gonna be an open gate end. What I just did was walked our 19 inch measuring wheel from that outside of the H brace to this side of what will be our H brace. You can kind of see the shape of it laid out here. So from here up to that last post we just drove, that's gonna be our open space that our line posts are going to fill in. So now that I know that official measurement, I can divide by our number of posts and, and try to manipulate that to get us as close to our 30 foot spacing as we want. And then on the way back, I can use the measuring wheel with our spray paint to go ahead and mark our spots on the ground where those posts are gonna be placed. So my total footage for this gap is 684 feet. When I do the math and the breakdown on that, that's roughly 23 line posts at almost perfectly 30 foot spacing. It'll give us a few feet to play with and we might end up using those extra feet on this hill right behind me will be coming off of a rise of a high point. So we might need to shift that post to make sure it's on that true rise one way or another. So I think that's gonna work out perfectly for us. Now that we got our line posts laid out, we're gonna work on getting them set so that they're straight and in line, and we'll just go down the line driving the posts. The Kencove Nitro 750 used here weighs 2,000 pounds and requires 15 gallon per minute hydraulic flow at 1,800 PSI. When operating the Kencove Nitro 750, be sure to keep the post cap level with the top of the post while applying constant down pressure. With 750 foot-pounds of driving force and only two inches of stroke, your post will be driven rapidly. This is our most aggressive change in elevation. You'll notice that we drove these line posts perpendicular with the landscape, including this post, which is our rise post. 
Our rise post marks the break in elevation. Everything from here goes drastically downhill. Even this post gets planted perpendicular to the ground. In the next segment, we'll show you step-by-step -step how to plan and construct an H-brace.